Hi, everybody. Hi. Good morning. It's still morning, right? Good morning. <laughs> I'm Yolanda Sanguini. And I'm Charlie Penn. And we are the hosts, co-hosts of Yes, yes Girl. Girl. <laughs> Which, so, what's Yes Girl, Yolanda? Tell them what, what our little baby podcast is. Oh, OK. So before that, we do have a third um, amigo. Her name is Corey Murray. And uh, Corey had uh, something else to do for work, um, so she couldn't be here. We miss but her. Yeah. we are editors at Essence Magazine. If you don't know, Essence Magazine is the oldest publication serving uh, black women in America. It's 48 years old. And in 2017, we launched a podcast called Yes, yes Girl. Girl. And even the name Yes Girl we came up with because it's like, I don't know about you, but we're always like, yes, girl. Yes, it's an, girl. It's a, like so confirmation, ways. affirmation. Yeah, there's so many ways to say yes, girl. Like, yes, girl. Oh, yes, girl. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we mm -hmm. thought this could be uh, Yes, Girl, the podcast is really about a just a fun take. It's conversations about anything that affects black women, lowbrow, highbrow. So we go everywhere. We go talk politics. We talk pop culture. There's three of us. Like I said, we're editors. So a lot of the content, we come back to the site and we create it for the, the website and the publication as well, and also Essence Festival. Right, and we the format is amazing because we have um, the unique opportunity to have so many celebrities come through our door. And Yolanda always, used to always say that no one talks to us, they don't talk to anyone else like they talk to us at Essence. Yeah. It's like a special conversation. It really is. So we have, I don't know, because the brand is so old, 48 years old, people feel really comf comfortable. They do. When they come to Essence and they sort of let their guard down, sometimes we have to be like, are you sure you want that to be public? They tell all the secrets. You know, so. They feel really comfortable. Yeah. And so we wanted to bring that to life with the podcast. And we have an expression that it's Black Girl Magic Headquarters yep. at Essence. And we wanted to let people inside those doors. Yeah. Um, and we, we're almost at 100 episodes in February, yeah. which we can't believe. And we've had some milestones. Yay. We have, thank you guys. We reached 1.5 million downloads. Which is, it's a little podcast that could. Right, so organically. For us, it's like, you know, it, it's, it's, some, it's a momentous. It's a moment. Because yeah. we did not know what we were doing. When we really we didn't know what we were doing. But Charlie, we should talk about, <laughs> you know, there's three of us hosting this podcast, and that's a lot of personalities. So yes. we're just going to talk about, you know, what's it like, Charlie, to like, why, how do you think it, it works for when you have multiple um, hosts? Yeah, so everybody warned us. They were like, ooh, three hoes? That's a lot of voices, right? And we were like, okay, but we've also been coworkers for almost 10 years together at the same place. So we knew we would have sort of a synergy. But what we realized was special is that we had three completely different personalities. And yeah. they were all essential to what we were trying to do. So Yolanda is Yopra as in Yolanda Oprah. That's what we ended up calling her because she hits people with that soul-searching question that comes out of nowhere, and before you know it, you're tearing up and answering it and like telling your whole story. That's Charlie, Yolanda. Tell me more. And then she'll do this. She'll get like, tell me, you know, and it's, but it works. Like, that's her thing. Like, you don't see it coming, and she gets you to really pour out your soul. And then Corey, who's not here today, who we miss, Corey is like an entertainment encyclopedia. She's been the entertainment director at Essence for a very long time. And she knows every movie, every, we like to call her the receipt reader. Yes. She knows everything anyone that comes in our door has ever done. So she'll always make people feel welcome. And then I sort of got nicknamed the Care Bear because I am that person that makes the guests feel warm. Yes. Comfortable, I'm a little bubbly. Yes. I don't know if you guys can tell, catch that. But it mattered. So that trifecta, that threesome, we felt like there was no guest that could come in that we couldn't really warm, you know, get them to warm up to us. Yeah, and Charlie really is a care bear. Like you, uh, someone will come in ice cold and Charlie will just warm them. So there's like a technique we have where a we, have a, we have a formula. Mm -hmm. Yeah? We hit them with the, yeah, it's like, I'm gonna warm them up. Corey's gonna let them know we see you. We know what you've done. We're not just having you on the show for numbers. And then Yolanda's going to bring it home and make sure that that interview that we have with them will be unlike anything else yeah. that we've experienced. Yeah. And also we share, because we there's do. three hosts. So we have to learn how to 
talk to each other um, How do you and do make that? sure. Yeah, we have visual cues so I can look at Charlie and be like, okay, she's about to close her question or end her question so I can come in. And just really trying to be cognizant of not over, sort of talking over each other because, you know, that can, be, that can be hard for the reader as well. I mean, sorry, the reader. The, the reader. Listener. <laughs> can you tell the listener? <laughs> the listener because um, you can't tell the voices. Sometimes people feel, you know, they've told us, you know, I can't tell who's speaking. So it's really important for us to be, take a breath and kind of let the next person speak before I don't want to talk over it, Corey or Charlie. And the visual cues, I think, are the most important part. And just being open to being to sharing the stage, the mic with uh, you know our the co-host. And I also think it's important to like we always strategize like what we want to talk to the guest about, and we all bring different as editors we bring a different expertise to the table. So we know we've learned to really like master like okay this is when Yolanda's gonna go in or yeah. try, I, I talk a lot about love and relationships and his lifestyle as a lifestyle editor. So I if it's you know someone where a couple comes in or you know we have celebrity couple guests we are able to kind of just get in where we fit in. Yeah, and I think it's important to really allow the co-host to kind of, you know, this episode is for Charlie because, you know, she has a thing that is her passion, so it's not just one person's passion. It's really important to share the, the, the you know, um, in terms of what, our, what we like. So one episode will be, oh, this is a Yolanda episode. Oh, this right? is a Charlie episode. This is a Corey episode. So we kind of really are cognizant of making sure everyone's voice is not only heard, but also felt through the content of the episode. And that's really been a strength for us. And I think in a lot of ways with us being newbies when we started this yeah. to the podcast world and not kind of knowing where it would go, that allowed us to turn lemonade, lemons into lemonade a yeah. lot of times yeah. as we hit different bumps, particularly with uh, reviews, Yolanda. Yes. Remember yes. when we started reading reviews? Yes. So when we started, because we were so new to this, you know, we would be like all up in Apple reviews, like, oh, what are they saying about us? Oh we my have God. 500, we have 102, 103. <laughs> Remember when we was counting like four, yeah, five? We had four reviews. <laughs> yeah, and we were very happy and, with that. And they weren't good. Not they weren't first. good. Yeah, so Charlie like couldn't talk more about like cuz we had the reviews that it was like, "Oh shit, we're not doing this right." But yeah, and in the beginning, there were a lot, yeah, like, it's interesting now because there's so many of them are so positive, but you're right, in the beginning, they were really negative, but it was interesting because people weren't, and not negative, that's not the right word, but yeah. people were saying, oh, we want your format to be like this, yeah. or we want your format to be like that, and what we realized is we didn't necessarily want to let that in because we didn't want people to tell us how to be like the podcast they already love. We wanted to figure out what our podcast was. Yeah. So we wanted to find our own voice, and we didn't feel like we could do that by starting to change things that people said in a comment section or review section overnight. And we stuck to that authenticity of what we wanted to bring, which was this unique conversation among black women. Yeah. And it worked, because it worked. then suddenly, Yolanda, did those comments change a little bit? I feel the like comments, they, I'm like, okay, they, they like it. us, they <laughs> like us, oh my God. It happened. For a while it was like, oh my God, oh my mm -hmm. God, oh my God, why are we doing this? Let's just quit, let's just stop doing this because nobody likes it. And, but then when you have, you know, it's, it's also just fun yeah. sitting down and talking to people that you admire and respect, even your colleagues, you know, Charlie, Corey, and myself, we've worked together for a very long time, so it's just, we're just shooting the shit a lot of times, you know? And it's fun, and people enjoy that. You know, our reader... Um, Jesus. Our you can reader. tell you're an editor. What is happening? Um, our <laughs> listeners tell us that it just feels like we're their girlfriends, uh, and we're just talking. Um, and do you feel like we gave it 100%? Because I think we really just said, you know what, we're going to do this. We gave it 300% <laughs> from the beginning. And I think that was a little... We had to a little bit of a learning curve because when we started we were like okay we're just gonna do this we literally you know we would be like writing for the website or writing for the magazine and then be like okay you know I'll just stop my story and I'm just gonna go downstairs and record this podcast really quickly and then I'm gonna go back upstairs and that's it what were we thinking that was so the what second we thought, job my god and people warned us that it would be a second job I mean you guys know podcasting is a whole job. It's not, it's not part-time if you're passionate about it. And we had these entire full-time jobs, and we were like, oh, we can do this on we the can side. Do this. We're just talking. No. Oh. We had to put the work in. And it, but it was exciting, I think, to figure out how to make that work in with our real jobs yeah. and finding a way to just blend it. And I think what kept us going is that we love doing it yeah. and connecting. Yeah. And then when those reviews started coming in and people were like, wait, I love this. This is a part of my morning routine. Yeah. And then we, there was a moment where we were like, do we have a season? Yeah. 
do we stop this for a while because our podcast is weekly? But then what changed, we thought about like, do we need a hiatus, yeah. right? Yeah. And then we started reading the, the reviews, you guys, and people were like, this is an essential part of my Thursday commute. Yeah. Or I look forward to every Thursday when a new episode comes out or when we would put an episode up maybe a few minutes late, somebody would tweet us, um, you guys. Where's my episode? <laughs> yeah. And that's when we were like, oh, we, we can't stop this. We've, we've vibed with our audience. We've connected with them. We're their friends in their head. Yeah. yeah. Right? And I think it's also just important to talk about, we did take that hiatus, but also it was important for us to look at podcasting as Charlie mentioned, not just a side hustle, like it had to be b become part of our DNA, and then really kind of taking the time to plan out our episodes. There was a time where, I'll be honest, we didn't really plan out our episodes. We would just kind of show up. And so we've learned to kind of uh, bank episodes. We mm -hmm. get a lot of celebrity interviews, and like I said, for us, it's not really about, we don't want a celebrity to give us the same interview they gave on GMA or Today Show. We just kind of want to get really, really um, familiar and like really um, cozy with yes. them. So it becomes something different. So we have to prep ourselves for that. And we've learned very, you know, some hard lessons about what works and what doesn't work. Um, yeah. And I think for starters, when you talk to a uh, talent, you kind of want to read everything that they've been talking about and all the interviews they've been doing with everyone else. But we found that, I mean, that was helpful, but that was all the things we didn't want to ask them. Yeah, yeah. Especially if someone is kind of making the press rounds, doing like, you know, like going through the, the motions, we realized how do we get that nugget? Yeah. And then also, how, what do we do when it gets a little awkward? Yolanda, you're the Ooh, queen of getting through an awkward Charlie, moment. Charlie, you guys, I, I, Charlie, you have to tell that story. There was an ice cold queen that came into our podcast, which happens a lot. A certain you know, celebrity, so you know, it's like, okay, it's, it's another ice cold queen is gonna come in, but we have to do this formula. Very A-list. Very A-list R&B diva. And you know, you guys ever have someone come in for an interview and they, I don't know, and they just throw you immediately? Like she was like, it's cold in here. I can't do that. It was just not a good vibe. But for me, I had to Care Bear charge that yeah. woman up. And yeah. Because you have to make them feel comfortable. Sometimes you don't have a lot of time. Yeah. So it was like, okay, I need to let her know that we appreciate her. Let her know we're happy for her to be here. Yeah. It works. But I think you have to also... We do a lot of ice-breaking conversation before we start recording. Yeah, yeah. Right? I think so we, it helps. It when really you come helps. in the door, we're like, hey, yeah. how are you? What's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Treat them like family. But also, it's like the, our, our podcast is not just about, you know, interviews. It's also about digging deeper into yeah. matters or issues that really affect black women in particular. And we've talked about some really important, you know, some things you know, that really like fibroids we've talked about, gone really deep about, we've gone, so it's not just entertainment, it's really about service as well. And we've also learned too, when, we, when possible, to bank shows. Because one thing I think that really helps you bring authenticity and connection to your podcast is when you're not feeling stressed, right? Like you're not feeling like you're overextended. And for us, it was about figuring out pockets where we could create content all in one day or do things and just stay ready and stay prepared, plan holiday episodes in advance, um, themed episodes in advance and not always feel like we were just rushing to the mic. And you know how we also break the ice? We do a lot of singing on the, on the <laughs> podcast. Do. Yolanda has the vocals, y'all, not me. <laughs> I don't have vocals. But so we kind of break the ice by doing some really silly, because it's just girlfriends hanging out, right? Yeah. And I think we're just girlfriends hanging out. So let's do a little singing. You want to sing with us? Yes. Yeah? We have this segment called Tea for the Week, and I want to hear all the vocals, ladies. If not, just hum along. Yolanda, you have to start us off. You up. don't have to have good vocals. Just do it. So we go, Tea, tea for, for the Week, ah. Tea for the Week. Hey. Oh, guys. <laughs> no shoulders? No. I think we need to do it again. Week. Hey. A tea for the Week. Come on. Tea it's, for the Week. We have fun. This is what you do with your girlfriends <laughs> in the living room with wine poured is what Yes Girl has become. That's what we do. But also, just to, let's talk about Charlie, like how eyes on the prize, like recovering. We've talked about recovering from like awkward moments. Oh yes. When Getting our <laughs> when our guests are not really excited to be with us. Mm -hmm. um, but also, we've also learned that when we have, because we are a, you know, we get to be multi-platform because of Essence. Essence, we put it in the magazine, we put it on the website, we put it, we create live events around our podcasts. Um, as well, so we really, when they come in and it's like, it's gonna, you can tell it's gonna be a difficult interview, we just have to stick to our guns because for us, it's like if I get a really good nugget from an interview on a podcast, we can write about it in all these different platforms. So we have multi, you know, many ways to kind of um, uh, 
The story has the legs. Story, the story has many legs. So for us, it's really important to get, when someone comes in and you feel like, oh, they're not gonna, they're gonna evade this question, we just gotta keep going because we need, we already have a plan, like I need to write about this story for the website, so I need this person to you know, answer this question, whether it's, you know, evading yeah. is not an option though. Yeah, we have fun, but we come to the mic as journalists first, um, and that's been unique for us, so we know we have to get the story, have a good time, and also, Speaking of vibing, we now feel like our listeners are our friends, so we don't want to let her down either. So when she sees a certain name at, in the title of our episode, we want to make sure that what she thinks she's about to get, she's going to get. Yeah. Because it's like, we know what we want to know from yeah. people and what people are thinking and talking about. So we also feel that obligation to her as our friend. I know, you know, we, we always call her her yeah. around, around the office. She, her. She, her. Yeah. You know, but we have to give her what she wants. Yeah. And yeah. we think about every episode that way. Yeah. Even though we've got some hymns. We've had some they, hymns. We have some days. Yeah. We have everybody. So, yeah. And it's really worked out. We've had Gabrielle Union on the show, Halle Berry on the show. I mean, we've had, I mean, Tyra Banks. Yeah. Jada Kyla, Pinkett. Jada we've Pinkett. Had, you know, sort of the A-list of, of black uh, Female Talent. celebrities, yeah. But if you listen, I think what we can say that we're proud of is that you won't hear an interview with them like the one we had with them anywhere else. Yeah. yeah. Whatever we get into, whether we go on about church or we yeah. go on about we've it, cried, <laughs> we've it, cried you know? together. We've done yeah. it's it's special. Yeah. And it I think is. for us, everything is about keeping the vibe of that authenticity. Yeah. That's the vibe. Don't kill the vibe. Yeah. Don't kill it. <laughs> and don't let a, a you know don't let someone in your comments kill it. Don't let. I think also in the podcast space. We, and tell me if you felt this, Yolanda. There was a moment where we felt like people who had been doing this for a while and really good at it were yeah. like, well, you shouldn't do this. And this is like, you know, yeah. I saw recently on Twitter someone posted about podcast cliche bingo. Did anybody see that? It was really, yeah. And we were like, oh, guilty, guilty, guilty. Yeah. But yeah. that's okay for our, our audience. Like yeah. she's, she likes us just the way we are. Just yeah. the way we are. And so I think we had to create a bubble yeah. where we were like, this is what we're here to do. We're going to do it. And don't kill my vibe. I think also it was really important for us to stop <laughs> comparing ourselves. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you mentioned that there were people who are obviously way more successful impressive. than us. Impressive. Um, and impressive than us. But, you know, it's really being about authentic and mm -hmm. uh, telling our story matters just like anybody else's. So we had to really, you know, me mentally kind of tell yourself, you know, this is not a million downloads each episode's kind of show, but it's really important. There is an audience for it, and I think in podcasting, that's really... Remember, we used to be bloggers, most of us yes. here, right? We used to be bloggers, and maybe three people read your blog, but you still felt like a, you know, a passion for it, and I think it's really important to keep that going, because it's, you know, what else do you have? Like, that's what... Follow the passion, and, you know. Yeah. yeah. Does anyone have any questions? We have a few minutes left. Yeah. Oh, come on. Hi. 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 I love the podcast. Yay. Thank you um, so much. I also, you know, in the world in which we're always talking about centering diverse voices, it was so amazing to, like, turn on Essence's podcast and know that black women were already at the center. Check that box. How did you get your organization that has been doing stories for black women for forever, my whole life, how did you get them to start a podcast? Was it, like, bringing in a producer, like, talk a little bit about your the format, process. the process, and like, do you have a studio? Did you guys build a studio? All that good stuff. That's a great question. Yeah, so we used to be part of Time Inc., which is, well, used to be the largest uh, publisher uh, in America, but that's no longer, but we, when Time Inc., they had a podcast play, and you know, they were like, oh, bring the black girls in. Okay, but you know, we had one show where other publications had like three or four or five. So we had one show and um, so we, we started it through Time Inc. They brought in a, 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 a podcast producing like a whole firm that does um, mm -hmm. digital, maybe some of you know it. Is mm -hmm. it called digital, digital media? Mm -hmm. Is it still called digital media? Mm -hmm. So they came in, they would come in every week. We had a podcast studio in the office. So they would come in each week and record us and then go back to their offices and clean it up. But then Time Inc. ended. Time Inc. was ruptured. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're independent. We're an independent company. So we are operating like a 48-year-old a startup. So <laughs> we had to buy our own mics. We had to buy everything. And, you know, most of us, we didn't come with that, um, that knowledge. So we had to kind of lean on our producers to kind of help us with mics and, like, you know, audio, stuff that we just never had considered. Yeah. So, yeah. And we stay with the mobile kit. We will come to you. Yeah. We'll just grab our mics and go follow the story, find a quiet place to record. 
and just go. And just stick with it. Yeah. Do you guys have any recommendations for how not to kill the vibe when your interview subject isn't in the room with you if you've done remote interviews? Like over the phone? Yeah. Yeah, so we interviewed the queen of vibes, Erica Badu, over the phone. And we were like, ooh. Yeah. How we we can't smell the incense, we can't yeah. feel the sage. What are we gonna do? And she was driving. I was like, damn it. She was in her car of all places. <laughs> so I think for us, we were together. So if you have co-hosts, we were in the same space. So we made sure that our energy was strong. We were making eye contact, smiling at each other, bringing as much energy as we could through the phone. But also, I think it's really also about that warm up laugh in the beginning. We didn't just have her pick up and go. We were like, Erica, what are you yeah. listening to? What yeah. did you do this weekend? Like, Talk about your children. Yes. Like, what's up? What's going on in your life? And that, then we got to the, the yes. meat of it. That first five minutes you spend with your bestie on the phone before you really get into it, yeah. take those five minutes to prep. It helps. Yeah. yeah. I think our time is up. Thank you guys so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you.